starter force is the single force that can give the same result by two or more forces. That means, let's say you have an object like this, right? Let's say you are giving some forces, let's say F1 and F2, right? If you can give the same result that is given by these two forces by a single force, this single force is called as the resultant force, right? So, resultant force can be divided into mainly three types. One is resultant of two collinear forces, then resultant of two parallel forces, then resultant of two inclined forces. Let's move on to resultant of two collinear forces. Let's say you have an object like this, right? And if a force is given, like this, let's say I am giving here 5 newtons and here also I am giving 10 newtons. Right? So, if you see these forces, these two forces have the same lines of action. That means these forces act in the same line. So, we call it as collinear forces. Right? So, when you are going to find the resultant force that is given by two collinear forces, first of all, you have to see the direction of these forces. Let's say here this 5 newton is towards the right hand side of my and then this 10 newtons also to the right hand side. Right? So as the direction is similar, you are going to add these two. So the resultant force will be 5 newtons plus 10 newtons. Altogether, this will be 15 newtons. Right? So as force is a vector quantity, we should mark the direction also. So, the direction of the resultant force also will be the direction of these two forces. That will be like this. 50 newtons from left to right. So you can mark it with an arrow. Let's say you have the same object, but the direction of this 10 newton force is reversed, like this. Right? So this will be 10 newtons now towards the left hand side. This will be 5 newtons towards the right hand side. Right? So the resultant force of these two forces will be acting on the direction with larger force. Here, when you are going to find the resultant force, you should subtract these two forces. That means, 10 newtons minus 5 newtons. Always, you should subtract smaller force from the larger force. That is, 10 minus 5, that will give you 5 newtons. As resultant force is also vector quantity, we have to mark a direction. So, the direction of these kinds of forces will be the direction of the larger force that is from right hand to the left hand side. So, we mark it like this. I will move on to the solvent of two parallel forces. Let's say you have an object, right? Someone is applying a force of, let's say, 10 newtons, right? Here, another one is applying a force of 20 newtons. Right? So, if you see these two forces, these two forces are also acting on the same direction. Right? So, as we did it earlier, if it is in the same direction, you have to add to get the resultant force. Here also, as it is in the same direction, you have to add these two. So, the resultant force will be, let's say R, resultant force will be 10 newtons plus 20 newtons all together you will get 30 newtons so direction will be the same direction as these two forces that will be towards left hand side right I will move on to another example from certain of two parallel forces let's say you have an object like this right then one is applying a force of let's say 10 newtons Another one is applying a force of 30 newtons and another one who is in left hand side giving a force of let's say 20 newtons right so let's just forget about this 20 newtons and if you consider these two forces that is 10 newtons and 30 newtons the resultant will be 40 newtons right that means as these two forces are in the same direction you are going to add these two Right, so, 10 newtons plus 30 newtons will get 40 newtons. Here, 40 newtons is applied towards left hand side and 20 newtons is applied towards right hand side. 
So if you simplify this part, this will give you 40 newtons and this will give you 20 newtons. So ultimately, if you are going to find the resultant force, as these two directions are different, you are going to subtract these two forces. That means resultant force will be 20 newton is subtracted from this 40 newton force. That is 40 newton minus 20 newton will give you 20 newton. So if we consider the direction of this resultant force, that will be the direction of the larger magnitude. That means it is towards the left hand side. So resultant force will be 20 newtons towards the left hand side. So I move on to resultant of two inclined forces. Here, if you consider these inclined forces, that means they are not either collinear, they are not either parallel, they are inclined forces, right? That means if you consider the two forces, these two forces act on two directions, right? So if you consider an angle between these two, there will be a certain angle, it's a theta, we don't know, right? So if you are to find the result of these two forces, you have to know this angle value. But for all of us, we don't have any questions to find the result of force of these kinds of inclined forces. But you should remember two things. One is, let's say, uh, I'll put here 20 newtons and I'll put here 30 newtons. Right? So if it were parallel forces, they will be added 20 newtons plus 30 newtons. But here, these two forces, that means when 20 newtons and 30 newtons are applied, right, the resultant force will be acted in between these two forces. That means the resultant will act like this. Say R. Right? So we can only tell two things. One is resultant force will act between these two forces and the magnitude of this resultant force will be less than the sum of these two forces that is R will be less than the sum of these two forces so 20 newtons plus 30 newtons you will get 50 newtons so we can say definitely this resultant force is less than 50 newtons do the exercise that I have shown here